What's going on guys and in today's video we'll do a simple lighting setup with a product bottle and model. The model is free to grab on Gumroad, link will be in the description so that you can follow along. Without further ado, let's get ready right to it. So now that you've imported the models and textures, we can go ahead and get started. And if you haven't already, again, it's on my Gumroad for free, free of charge. It comes with three bottles and the textures included as well. So you can go ahead and go on Patreon. I mean, I said Patreon, but you can go ahead and go on Gumroad and get this model. So, but anyways, for today's tutorial, we're just gonna light or we're gonna work with one bottle here. So I'll go ahead and hide the other bottles because you should get three bottles in here. You might have to import textures, but the textures are in the, the RAR that it comes in. So. It won't be hard finding them. So we'll go ahead and just use the clean bottle. I'm moving into the origin point so that it makes this a lot easier. The first step here, we really wanna develop our composition. Before we light anything, we need to set our foundation in place. And how are we gonna do that? It's just by setting up our camera and our resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring our camera down. Cause my camera is here. Actually, for, to, for this tutorial, I'll add a camera in so that this can be easy to follow. So we'll start by just adding a camera in. I'll reset all the dimensions and we'll just rotate it on the X axis. So we're looking straight forward. So I'll bring this back some, I'm not really sure. Typically with product photography, you really wanna use very tight focal lengths. So probably gonna use around maybe a 85, Either 50, I mean 50 is, is good enough. That's enough compression to not distort the image. I think I'm gonna use it at 85 here though, just for the sake of this tutorial. So once you develop your composition, this is just one part of it all here. Now we can start to work with lighting. I'm actually gonna change this so that we're not rendering out the other parts of the scene. Um, you can turn on the rules of thirds. I use those and pass a forte. Pass, pass a part out. I think that's how you pronounce it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But we can go ahead and pretty much get started here. So obviously when we start up the render, there's gonna be nothing here or there is something here, but you just can't see. We don't have any lights. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and import our lights. First thing I like to do when it comes to lighting product photography, I always like to kind of start just simple by literally backlighting the object. Simple like this. Really simple, really clean, really effective. The first thing I do before I f use any fill lights or key lights, I always just backlight first to see how our object will look under backlighting conditions. And I just adjust it. In this tutorial, you don't have to follow everything that I do. The main goal is to get you to, you know, do create something really cool. So, like I said, you can follow me, but if you know a lot, a bit about lighting yourself, you can actually work around and come up with some different ideas and whatever the case may be. So, what we'll do is go ahead and use this area light here, kind of bring it at a reasonable location right maybe just about there that way we're getting this nice soft highlight around the object as well as to pick it out from the background my compositing I usually just like remove the background so it just only renders out the bottle itself because when I composite my images I sometimes add a a bloom behind it so it creates more contrast the object but anyways let's go ahead and add another light in so well, before we add another light in there's two different types of lighting we could use actually we can just duplicate this one so I'll duplicate this light and we can kind of rotate it around maybe 45 and 40 degrees here right so for this render, 
you can either go for a high when it comes to lighting you can either go for high key or low key and for this render i really was thinking about going for a low key lighting setup as you've seen in the thumbnail so what i'll do is just go ahead and um pretty much only light one side and what determines a low key image is just the light to dark ratio it's just how light is the scene compared to dark so if the scene is darker compared to light it's considered to be a low key image. If the image is lighter compared to dark, it's considered a high key image. So if we actually just front light this object, this scene would be considered a low, high key. And that is essentially because we have, you know, there's not too much shadows here. But the moment we kind of angle this light a bit, you know, and kind of introduce some shadows the moment the scene becomes a little bit more low key but now well, the reason why i was saying um the main thing we don't really want to be using just a plain white light is because we want to have a nice fall off on the left side of the object we want to have a nice gradient across the highlight of the object so what we'll do is just create a plane It'll be exactly the same as this so we can actually take the same size and everything that nature we just plug it in here and we can rotate it when we want the x-axis okay we'll turn that off for now we'll go into our shading tab um we'll go ahead and create a gradient emission shader i've already created one but i'll recreate it for this tutorial so all I've done was taking a color ramp. Well, first, actually, all I've done was taking an emission shader, right? Plugged it in to the material output, added in a gradient texture, plugged that into the color. So now it's going from light to dark. So dark areas, meaning that it won't be light or the emission won't work. And then light, meaning or white, meaning that the emission will be on or it will emit light so dark meaning it won't emit light and light dark meaning it won't emit light and light meaning it will so we'll go ahead and import a gradient texture or actually no no a color ramp right just so we have a little bit more flexibility and control over the gradient kind of want to add a little bit more of a fall off here so we can just kind of move it to maybe 0 0.6 0 0.630 oh no 0.630 seems fair enough sometimes i even just do this but i mean that's completely pointless here so what i'll do is just kind of rotate it the same way we can kind of make a comparison of the two lights so one is the gradient light another good habit to get into is just to name everything and organize so as we see we can see the clear difference between the two actually hold up hold up we need to change the intensity of the first one so i'm going to change this to maybe 10 all right and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the fall off of the object. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, here's the object without the fall off, which it looks very, very uniform. There's no gradient. Now, like I was saying before, if we compare the lighting with the gradient fall off, you can see it here. It looks a lot better as opposed to this. It's very, very uniform in terms of the highlight, right? We're not really getting a gradient across the object. This is why I really love to use, well, I just started, now I just started using gradient lighting when it comes to my product renders, right? because of the benefits it has when it comes to the lighting and how it creates a fall off in the object. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference in the long run. Cause it really doesn't look too different, but there is a subtlety, especially in the gradient on the 
the label as you can see here so what I'll do is actually go ahead and turn our backlight here All right turn disable that other light from our render I'm not really liking how bright the backlight is so we can actually move it or how intense it is I should say you can actually kind of move it back a little bit further because right, I don't really like how intense it was it was right here just move it back a, a bit further so bam this is basically silhouetting the object here which looks really nice itself like this but we'll add that um since the scene is considered to be low key I don't really think adding in a bounce light or bounce plane to bounce light would be ideal here so I'm not really gonna do that here so I mean really essentially this is pretty simple lighting setup it's just a two-point lighting setup we have a light behind the product or the, behind the bottle and a light to the left of the bottle or quarter panel of the bottle here right and it just creates this nice product rendering or at product rendering you say so what I'll do is um, kind of tweak it a little bit more. I don't really want it to end there. I kind of want it to wrap around the entirety here. I'm not really liking how this area is looking itself. So um, I can kind of adjust it a little bit more to angle. Right, you can see how low key and how to the object gets lost in the background. And to prevent that, all we have to do is add in an area of light to pick it out from the background. Like I said, when it comes to compositing, I usually just disable the transparency, then I add another black, then I add a back background or a black background with a bloom effect behind the object to create more contrast. But um, for this tutorial, I'm not really going to go into compositing. If you guys want, I will drop a video on that itself. I have a, a pretty decent workflow or a workflow on compositing that I do when it comes to product rendering or just rendering in general. So, I mean, at this point, the render is pretty much complete. It's not really left anything left to do here. It's a pretty simple lighting setup that I use a lot of the times. You know, as a, a good rule of thumb is that you really don't wanna be using too many lights when you're first starting out. So the best advice you can get is just to just start small. You don't really wanna give yourself too much you can't handle, right? So if you're just beginning, I think just playing around with maybe like one light would be fine. Just to experiment, you know, without the pressure of having to control multiple different light sources because it is it is challenging when you start adding multiple light sources and you start adding light sources behind it to the side to the right you know and just trying to control and what also increases difficulty or challenge is how the object is made or how it's formed so objects like maybe lighting a bicycle or a car might be a little bit more complex than lighting a soda can you know but anyways I mean that's it so if you guys like this video be sure to like comment subscribe if you have any concerns please let me know in the comment section but yeah without further ado peace